Hey guys, so we're back again. Uh, before I start, I just want to say thanks for all of your nice comments on my last video. I really appreciate that. Honestly, I do, so thank you for, you know, all the comments. And just you guys who watch me all the time and say you look forward to my videos and stuff, that sort of, you know, makes me carry on. Because <laughs> I think my videos are crap, but if you guys say they're good, then I'll keep making them. <laughs> so today we're going to do a gear video. I've actually wanted to do this for quite some time um, but I've just not done it yet it's probably been a few years since I had this idea to do all my gear talk about what I have and why how much it was what I think about it um, and just you know have a talk about gear in general so yeah that's what today's video is so for me gear is well it should be for everyone gear is so important so important you need to invest your money correctly so you know there's this thing about you know cheap gear is rubbish gear and most of the time that is the case but there is some cheaper gear that is good and you just need to really you know I'm a person who before I buy anything I'll read a lot of reviews um, and, that sort of, and even YouTube videos like you're spending your hard earned money you want to know if it's going to be a waste of time or not so that's what I recommend if you're thinking about buying something but then so what we'll do is we'll start from head to toe we'll do it that way so I'll start with helmets obviously you guys know I wear Showy, the Showy Xperia 3 I do have another video unveiling this one because it was unreleased at the time so yes this is my Xperia 3 I do have two of them actually the Showy and this is the Marquez the, the sort of latest Marquez one. There is a black and red one out now but I won't go on too much about helmets because I do have like I said the unveiling video of this one where I did talk about them quite a bit so I'll link that in the description box so you can have a watch of that as well if you want where I'll talk a bit more about it. So I'll just sort of brush over it quickly but honest to god this is the best helmet I've ever used. I've had AGV, I've had RI and show it. So I started with when I first started riding it's gonna sound really weird but <laughs> on my scooter an RX7 GP so I had like the best Arite of the time um, I got in one went well it was all right I thought the field of view was a bit small um, but yeah it was a good helmet that was that then I got an AGV downgraded massively <laughs> to an AGV K3 I think it was oh, I might have been four oh, I don't know <laughs> I can't remember but yeah um, they, it, that was not a great helmet <laughs> I will admit, I mean it wasn't expensive but it was not a great helmet so don't really rec recommend them <laughs> but um, yeah and then I went to a Showa NXR which is sort of the one downgrade from this I guess that was my first Marquez replica helmet it was a black and red one and then we went to my second helmet which is down there which I'll talk about in a second but yeah uh, this is definitely the best helmet I've ever had it's so light it's with it being a race helmet it's not that um quiet but i don't think it's that loud either i recommend wearing earplugs when you ride anyway to anybody i don't think you know a lot of people with earplugs are like well i want to I enjoy hearing my bike so why would i want to wear earplugs well that's fine but you can actually still hear your bike don't worry about that they just drone out the wind noise so they are you know a good thing to have <laughs> so yeah i absolutely love this i think it looks absolutely mint I've got the um, GP stickers on it as well. My friend made me these Yanis Strelkovs. I hope you pronounced that right. <laughs> um, so I've got the same stickers as what Marquez has and the blue visor. I just think that looks absolutely insane and it's so good. And then I always wear a neck warmer. This is a buff, always buff. I've been wearing buff since day one. Um, and it's just like a, I don't know if you see that well, but it's just a matching Marquez one and I do have a few. I feel I have a lot of buffs <laughs> um, because I always wear them I just don't like my neck being exposed uh, I just it, it makes me cringe and when I see people without them like obviously it's not gonna offer you any protection but it just really does make me cringe when I see people's necks out <laughs> I don't know why but it does so that's the my 
um, what's the word, main helmet. <laughs> I'm lucky enough to have two. <laughs> so this is the first one I got. Um, I got this probably about a year and a half, two years, I can't quite remember. So this is like the original Marquez one, like so. And this is basically my track helmet now. Um, because I'm scared of crashing with that one because it's so beautiful. Obviously I still love this one but it's you know it's the previous one so you you know you prefer the new one don't you. So again I've got the stickers here. Um, I've not got a showy one because I couldn't find any on there but this is my track helmet and vlogging helmet basically because I don't want to put a GoPro mount on that one. I just don't want to have this big monstrosity on the side. Um, of having them out on there, it's just going to ruin how it looks. So I thought, you know, while I've got two helmets, they may as well make full use. So if I'm vlogging, I'm wearing this helmet. Um, this is the chrome visor as well. It looks mint. And then obviously I have my microphone. This is a Sony microphone I got off Amazon. It wasn't too expensive. And then that just clips in the front on your straps, sort of on there, underneath, obviously. Um, and that's how I get my lovely crackly audio. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's my helmets. Before I skip over to, you know, lower half, um, helmets, you know, invest your money in helmets. I 100% believe that and you can tell me what you want about, you know, you can get cheap helmets that are better but you can't put a price on your head. It's so important and you can, you know, I know everybody, not everybody can afford you know a 700 pound helmet and that's fine and i get that i can't afford one and there is finance options available on multiple you know websites and uh, suppliers if you like so i do you know it's a stress it to you as well and that's another thing um when you see a lot of people having pillions on the back of the bike and the pillions got like a 10 pound box helmet and like no gear at all and it just sort of drives me insane like I know that person might not go on the bike much so you don't want to invest money on them but if they come off and they lose their life does that money really you know it's just not something to bear thinking about and obviously I don't wish that on anyone <laughs> but you know that's something to really think about they might only go on the back of your bike once but if you have an off and it turns out to be a tragic off then you know you just need to do it <laughs> Even if you give them your old helmet, you know, which is probably better than this one you've got for the one time they ride your bike. But just make sure it's in date because helmets have, I think, five years. I'm pretty sure it's five years. So you need to make sure it fits because the fit is so important. I can't stress, you know, if your helmet moves around loads, it's pretty much useless because on impact, it's just going to be moving around. It's, it can actually make you much worse then well, it can just make everything worse so it's really not worth it so you need to really make sure the helmet fits on yourself and even pillions that's just so important to your head at the end of the day you can't be messing around and cutting corners with this stuff so i'm not gonna lecture like <laughs> you but it's kind of common sense <laughs> so we'll go to ba your base layers so this video is all about my summer riding gear basically so it's leathers and um, those of you who wear leathers will know that leathers are a pain to get on so you need some like compression clothing anything that's sort of slippy <laughs> to get your leathers over the top because it's not easy so this is what I wear most of the time I have a few different ones this is a fox it's called a rash guard so it's just like really thin um that sort of weird material it's like so so a rash guard is actually for surfing <laughs> i know it's not the, yeah but it works basically the same it's the same sort of thing it's what i wear underneath it's really easy to get my levels over the top it's really comfortable it's stretchy and it's fine for sweating in because <laughs> on those hot track days you know we do sweat quite a lot so that's what i wear underneath and then the bottom half I'll wear like gym leggings, uh, again the same material like so to really make it easier to slide your levers on because it's hard work um, and it's just, it feels nice, you know, you can feel the, I like, I've seen people wear jeans 
under the levers. What is wrong with these people? Like, what kind of a weirdo do you have to be to do that? I can't, I can't move in jeans as it is and you want me to put levers over the top. No, no. So yeah, compression clothing, that's what you want for underneath. This is another important um, step to your gear. I feel like a lot of people won't really think about this too much and they'll just think, oh, well, it's okay because my levers have got one built in. So back protectors, you should really have a um, standalone back protector like this, not the foam thing in your levers that's probably about six years old and no longer really works because obviously over time these things deteriorate. So this is a Nox Aegis. I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it, but look how it moves. It's really comfortable. It bends. It's got these sort of like little yellow things that move. You can see them flexing. Um, and these do come in different sizes. This is a size six. So you need to make sure you get the right size um, for you. I've, I'm obviously a taller girl, so a six. This is right for me, but obviously if you're short, you'll need a really small size. Um, but it just straps around like so. Straps around and then it's got the adjustable straps on the front. So you can really make it secure. And I think that's just really important. I think probably a lot of people don't really think about it too much. Um, because they just think, you know, my levers have got one built in. But you really should have a proper back set because we all know what happens when we fuck up our backs like that's not a game that's serious you know life-changing injuries so this is really important and I do recommend this one um, I was using a Dionysia one before this and uh, it was actually a, a snowboarding one I found out later on because it was white and I didn't know that when I bought it so that wasn't the right one to be using so make sure you're using the right one and it's actually for motorbikes um, I can't quite remember how much these are it might be around 70 pound. Oh, I don't know, that could be completely wrong. I'll um, link all the prices in the description um, and we'll go through them. So now we're getting on to my suit, which is probably about oh, six, five years old. <laughs> so it's pretty old, really. Um, as you guys know, suits are expensive. It's not something you can just buy when you feel like it. Um, this oh, is so dirty. Um, I'll admit I'm so lazy. Just don't judge me. Um, so this, I'll zip it up, that might help, <laughs> is a Alpine Stars GP race suit. So at the time, this was pretty much, uh, I will insert a clip of me wearing it as well. This was pretty much the high-end suit and I actually got it in the sale I think it was about 530 rings a bell in the sale so I was like whoa like I loved Alpine Stars at the time I had a two-piece suit before this one um, an Alpine Stars one but that wasn't very old um, so I loved Alpine Stars so I wanted this one you know it's the GP one so it's got the elbow sliders, not that I'm ever going to use them, but I wanted the top <laughs> suit, obviously. Knee sliders, one goal, one vision, I just really like that, I thought that was really cool, even though it's cheesy. Um, this is a men's, I think. So it's the men's EU 48. So a lot of girls always ask me, you know, oh your suit fits so good, um, you know, what what is it? and what not but ladies no leather suit is ever gonna fit you good there just isn't any even women's ones it doesn't happen literally i have give up trying to find a suit that fits my body as a female it there isn't one so yeah i'm pretty happy with this it doesn't fit too bad it's a bit big around here and um i have a lot of ball space <laughs> so yeah but it is men's it's lasted me this long. Um, the other, about 
six months ago. The zip snapped off, so I had to get that put on. I was at California Superfect School, and they kindly put this on for me because I could not do it. I was having such a bath, and I couldn't zip it up or down. It was a nightmare. But that is the only thing that's broken it, which is quite amazing, really, for that length of time. But what I will say is the quality of Alban Stars used to be a lot better than it is now. Like the the quality of my two piece suit that I had all them years ago, which was probably so old. It was so thick, everything was so robust, like, but I feel like everything's going that way because, you know, everything costs a lot more nowadays and companies are trying to cut corners with costs. So the quality doesn't feel as good as sort of, you know, back in the day. But like I say, everything sort of seems to go that way. Um, so yeah, it's, it's done me well, to be honest. It has cracked. The leather has cracked in quite a lot of places but that's mainly due to my neg negligence, I <laughs> can say. Everyone asks, always asks me, oh, how do you clean your leathers? I don't. If I clean them, it's with baby wipes. I am the worst person ever. I just, I'm lazy. And then observe the hump on the back, which just gets caught on everything. That's why it's all scuffed. <laughs> but yeah, I will insert a couple of me wearing it so you can see what it fits like as well. But yeah, it does the job. Um, I do recommend a lot of super riding in. Full stop. I know a lot of people like to wear these Kevlar jeans and stuff, but I never feel safe in anything other than leathers, to be honest. Um, I got some Knox jeans, and they're not Kevlar, I can't exactly remember what they're made out of, but this, they are actually better than Kevlar because Kevlar does um, deteriorate over time and uh, become weaker, so that's not great. Uh, I don't recommend that at all. <laughs> So yeah, I do have um, jeans and a nice leather jacket. You know, it sort of looks like a fashion one, but it's actually a bike one. But I literally, you know, I don't wear them often at all because I just don't feel safe in anything other than leathers. Even textiles, no, uh, sometimes you have to wear them. I do wear them, but no, it's a leather suit for me no matter what. You can try and sell me anything, but it's never gonna work leather suit for me <laughs> let me know if like if you guys agree with that do you feel safe riding in you know other like normal stuff or do you are you the same as me you know you wear your suit all the time no matter what so we'll now go on to boots another important factor <laughs> so this is the city vortis um this was the top spec at the time but they've now brought another one out that's um you know the level above so i have used cd8 since day one i was wearing city boots on my scooter so i had a city st and i've had them i got these last year and i've been riding eight years and i was wearing the city sts that whole time that is how long they have lasted like honest they're amazing they just don't ever break they are so good and my whole family, you know, wears city boots as well. And they've, you know, been commuting and they just last really well. So I wanted some new ones because they were white and black and they, they were literally yellow and black by the end of the seven years or whatever it's been. So I wanted some new ones and these are the City Vortis. These are awesome. I've wanted these for quite a while. Um, it is a bit of a bath to get them on. Um, everyone does sort of say, oh no, you know, they're too much of a bath, but you do get used to it. I should probably fasten them up to show you. That's just lazy, that isn't it? So, it's these little clasps, so you just pop it in on either side, like so, and then there's these little twisty things, and they tighten, so they're so tight, like they're not going to come off your foot, and they have one, two, five five points to you know secure them so they are so good i do recommend these i know like i say a lot of people are like no they're such a faff you know i can't be bothered it takes me 10 minutes to get my boots on yeah it does take a while more than just you know a normal boot but at least i know my foot's safe because your feet are important right so i don't mind taking 10 minutes to put my boots on in the slightest and obviously there is um, easier options that City make, like the ST. They're sort of like um, a clasp. It's all like a motocross clasp, but a bit differently. 
Um, I still have my city STs that I should probably find them and show you, but I don't know where they are. So I might not find them and show you, but yeah, these are really good. Vortis, um, I think these are about um, 290 maybe. I should have done all the prices before I even started this film in this video, but I'm not a good YouTuber. So yeah, I'll add them all in the description. Um, yeah, awesome boots. I also forgot to add about the boots, they do have air vents, which in summer is an absolute godsend. If you've never had boots with air vents, you need to invest because you will be like, why have I not found these earlier? Because it's so good in summer. So yeah, that's another thing. Um, so now, bags, because bags are an important thing in my gear. I always have a bag, always, because I've got my filming stuff in it, my camera, um, a jacket in case it's going to rain. Um, so yeah, this is the Krieger R20, um, this is a really good size bag, I feel like this one's getting in the way, but it's just an average size, it's not too big, it's not too small, it's sort of waterproof, but it's not 100% waterproof, you, stuff does get, get wet, especially in this front pocket, but, you know, there is waterproof ones available, so I'm not too bad about that, it's got the clasp on the front, which really does help because I get a bad back on riding it all the time. I think it's because I always have a bag on. So yeah, I get a really bad back. But these definitely help with these clasps on the front. Because I was just wearing for years and years a fox backpack. Like just a normal one with no support at the front and the slightest, just the straps. My back was in agony all the time. So this has made a big difference. And then it's even got the one at the bottom that wraps around. So you've got two things to support it if that makes sense but Krieger bags are something to invest in seriously they last for years I was before I got this I was using my dad's R25 which is literally 10 years old and it still works fine honestly Krieger bags and anyone will tell you this anyone will tell you this about Krieger everyone knows they are worth the money 100% and that's why I have three of them <laughs> this is my Krieger R3 bum bag, fanny pack, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Honestly, these are the best invention ever. I've been using a bum bag for years before I got this one. I had a Dionysi one and it was absolutely falling to bits. It had holes everywhere, but I was still using it anyway. Um, so I was absolutely buzzing when I got this because this is waterproof as well. This top section here, um, and it's really quite big for a bum bag as well. So it does stick out a lot when you're riding, but why does that matter? So yeah, this is like so good. Um, again, it's got all the tightening straps and I'll show you how it opens because I always want to carry my camera, I always want to carry something around so I need a bag of some form. So if I'm not taking too much, like if it's a really nice day, I'll take this because I know I don't need a jacket for over the top if it rains. So it's got this inside pocket for all your money, your phone, or whatever, which is what I usually use it for. Then this on clips, it's like a roll top, but it's waterproof. And then obviously it's just there's no pockets inside it's just the deep and at the minute it's full of like filming gear tripods and stuff because i use it all the time and then it's got a front pocket which is full of gopro mounts you can't really see but yeah gopro mounts because i always need them so honestly this is a really good buy um i know some guys are funny about wearing fun bags like they think it's really gay or whatever but it's it's not like Save your back hurting and just wear a bum bag, it's fine. So that's my, I think that's my favourite one. But the R20, I literally use that every day when I was computing, computing? <laughs> Commuting every single day. And even now, when I go in the car, because I don't need to commute anymore, I still use that bag. You know how most girls go to work and have like a handbag? I've got my Krieger R20, that's the kind of person I am yeah <laughs> this bad boy is the Krieger R30 so this has even more support because this is pretty massive <laughs> so we've got I'll just fasten it for you just to show you um the two I think they're called quad locks at the front so that gives you tons of support for your back like honestly it takes so much pressure off 
clasps at the side and this is a roll top this one's 100 percent whopper so this one has a roll top one it's got two front pockets honestly this bag is massive i think it it's a 30 litre bag isn't it and that's why it's called now 30 so we undo these side ones <laughs> somehow <laughs> um it's just a really deep bag i'm not gonna show you because there's actually stuff in there but <laughs> it's just a really deep bag with no pockets inside, which I kind of like when I have like a little pocket inside for my money or whatever, but you do have the front ones for that, so that's not too much of a problem. But yeah, Krieger bags are seriously worth the money. And I've just realised I forgot to do gloves, so we'll do them now. So, the, probably the most asked question I get on my YouTube is what are those gloves? So, my gloves are the Knox Handroids, and they are the Mark II set, I think. I actually had the Mark 1 as well and then upgraded to these ones. So just the best protection money can buy basically. You've got the um, sliders on the hands which is not something you really get often. I'll try and show you that. Um, and obviously all down here. There's just protection everywhere and they look like robot fingers so they're just so cool. So I'll show you. Maybe not with the hands but watch out. But, So you've got the clasp at the front like a normal pair of gloves and then this contractor, twist it and it tightens on. Can't remember the exact name for it. I should do really but look how cool that is. They look so good. So yeah, um, I have been wearing these. I was wearing these pretty much in all weathers and they've not really got that bad. They're not um, peeling anywhere. If you look kangaroo leather palm, it's completely fine. So yeah, they've lasted really well. I've had these probably about two years now maybe and they're still fine. Um, honestly, I think the best gloves you can get really uh, when you first get them. They are ridiculously tight and you're like, oh God, like I can't wear these. But if you really bear with them, honestly it's worth it because everyone says the same thing like they're so tight and it's like keep going, keep going, just keep wearing them it will get better and honestly they are so good so they're Nax Armour Handroids and I 100% recommend them as gloves so yeah this is not sponsored by any of these brands by the way I just thought this was a good idea and it's not too warm outside to ride so yeah. <laughs> yeah I hope this video has been okay but I could have literally talked for days about each thing so I know I didn't really go into too much detail on everything but I feel like this video is already going to be so long so if you want to know about any like more information about anything in particular let me know in the comments and I'll try and help you on that because there's a lot of stuff I brushed over but you know we've not got all day to video and I doubt any of you would you know you'd get bored so <laughs> yeah um I hope you've enjoyed today's video and it's something a bit different the weather's still not great in the UK it's still pretty cold so we're not out riding but I might be out tomorrow so I might get a video done tomorrow as well Look at me, you know, really putting the effort in. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. And yeah, it's been good to chat.